Hello, CIS Physics kids. I'm coming at you live to broadcast this exciting data collection video for the Torque Lab. And what you are looking at right now is the document that will be posted on Google Classroom that you will work on and fill out as you go through this lab. It is formatted like all of your other high school labs with the purpose form up procedure data graph analysis and conclusion sections. But I would first like to just look at the purpose. So our purpose is to graphically and mathematically model the relationship between force versus lever arm of a rotating meter stick in static equilibrium. Yes, that's a mouthful. So there's a lot of terms in there that um, may be foreign to you. Um, there are terms in there that you, you should have known and have seen before. But since there are some unknown terms, uh, you're going to have to do some work to define them. And you'll see in the warm-up that you have to define three terms, lever arm and static equilibrium, with our, which are both in the purpose. And then you also have to define torque, which is from the name of this lab. And they're all connected. And then once you're done defining those terms, you need to predict what a force versus lever arm graph would look like. And then go through the other steps to get all the way to the conclusion. So, all right, I want to show you what our setup here is. First off, if we're measuring force, we're going to be using a vernier force sensor. So, there you go. You should be familiar with that. And then, here's our setup of our lever, or our rotating meter stick, I should say. And you'll see that on one end of the rotating meter stick is a hanging mass. Um, that is going to be our balancing mass. And we're going to put the mass at a particular um, position. And I will show you that in a little bit. And you'll see that the meter stick has a, um, a screw in the middle of it. And you, I don't know if you can see that, but it, it is at 50. And so that is the point where the meter stick is rotating. It's the axis of rotation. And then on the other side, you see a string hanging there. That's um, the string that I'm going to hook up the force sensor to um, to pull pull the string at various positions along the meter stick on the other side of the axis of rotation. And so I am going to try to balance out this, this hanging mass on one side with my force sensor on the other. And I'm going to do the force sensor at various distances away from the axis of rotation, which is that screw. And that distance away from the axis of rotation is what is called the lever arm. All right. So going back to the computer, what I need to do is I need to open up graphical analysis, which I already have opened up. And you'll notice that I have a force versus time graph, which should be familiar to you. However, I don't care about the force versus time graph. I only care about the actual force that we're going to be given. And you'll see that right now the force is zero, so that's good. I'm pushing in on the force sensor, so I got a force of negative whatever. And then I'm pulling on the force sensor, and I've got a force of positive whatever. And um, that's because if you pull on the force sensor, it's positive, and when you push on it, it's negative. So I will be pulling on the force sensor on the string on the, on the rotating meter stick and measure forces at various distances away from the axis or various lever arms. And I am going to set the mass at 30 centimeters, which is important. So if it's at a position of 30 centimeters and the axis of rotation is set at 50 centimeters, then the distance that the mass is away from the axis of rotation is 20 centimeters. And so that lever arm distance is 20 centimeters. All right, now I am going to first set, um, why don't we set the force sensor at 60 centimeters. And so if, if 60 centimeters is is set there and the axis of rotation is at 50 then how far are we away from 
axis of rotation. Now you'll notice the force reading is fluctuating. Let me get it to settle. So I would say, why don't we go with 10.1 newtons when the lever arm is 10 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to move the lever arm. And you'll notice when I pull the force sensor at the lever arm location or position, I have the meter stick in balance. It is in static equilibrium. So now I'm putting the force sensor at 65 centimeters. Once again, axis of rotation is 50 centimeters. The mass is still set at a position of 30 centimeters, which is 20 centimeters away from the axis of rotation. Now, looking at the force sensor reading, let it settle. I would say, let's go with 7.5. It's really sensitive. It's really tough to get it to settle on a spot. All right, the next spot is we'll go to a position of seven cent 70 centimeters, which is how far away from the 50 centimeter axis of rotation. And that force reading is, why don't we go with 5.6? Don't go out to the hundredth because obviously it's fluctuating too much. All right, now I'm gonna go out to, let's, let's make a jump out to 85. So now my lever arm position is at 85. The axis of rotation is at 50, remember that. So how far are we away from the axis of rotation at 85? That is your lever arm. And so we now have a force reading of, let's say, let's go with 2.7. And then let's go way out to, ninety-five. And so remember, axis of rotation at 50. We're now at a lever arm position of 95. And once again, the mass is at lever arm position of 30 on the other side. And our force reading is, let's go with 2.2 .2 Newtons. All right, so now we should have five data points. That should be enough for our graph. And um, hopefully you saw how the, how the numbers went and you should notice that you're going to have a nonlinear relationship and I'd actually like you to linearize that nonlinear relationship instead of just doing a curve with a, a curve fit. So you may have to go back to the very beginning when we were in that first unit um, just learning about graphing on Logger Pro and uh, you may have to refer to some instructions. If you have questions about it obviously you can ask me as well. I hope this video is good enough for your data collection. Please, please just uh, meet with me on Google Meet or fire questions away at me over, um, over email or whatever way you need to, and we will uh, go from there. Have a good one, folks.